Hello and a very good morning to you. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you're all feeling good this Sunday morning. It's Jason with part two of our recording. And today, this morning, what we're going to do is still working with the energy of the eclipse. So this is relevant to the solar eclipse meditation of last week. We were looking at our soul purpose, but today I'm going a little bit deeper. And we're going to investigate something a little bit different. Uh, we're working with the lunar eclipse energy now, which is in the 5th of May. So the solar eclipse is when there was a new moon. And obviously the shadow of the moon was between the sun and the earth, eclipsing the sun. And the lunar moon, the lunar eclipse is in the 5th of May. And that's when the full moon is eclipsed and um, by the shadow of the earth. How very interesting, eh? Uh, so it's eclipse season. We're right in the middle of it. And I'm here to help guide you through eclipse season and help you. If anyone would like any advice, any help whatsoever, you know to find me at Synergy Reiki Studio on the Facebook where we are just now. And if you send me a message there, I'd be delighted to hear from you and I would get back to you, of course, right away. Please, that's where you message me. Uh, nowhere else. Uh, there about spiritual things and if I can be of any assistance to you let me know. Thanks Patricia for inviting me on for a second week in the trot. Uh, thanks for everyone who watched the first video and for all your feedback as well and please don't forget please hit the like button give me a thumbs up on Facebook give me a thumbs up on YouTube as well. I've actually changed the name of the YouTube channel because it wasn't really steering people in the right direction. So Jason's journey sounded okay to me when I wrote it. Um, but I've only got 88 subscriptions. Can you believe that? You know, all these other, um, you know, thousands of followers on Facebook. But I changed the name to Jason's Meditation Journeys. And I asked my young friend, uh, one of my best friend's children, actually. And, and, and you, can, you know, like young people really know technology. Unfortunately, you spelt meditation wrong and it takes, uh, you're only allowed to change a name once every three weeks. So excuse the spelling mistake, um, that will update itself, but I've changed the name or my name was changed to Jason's Meditative Journeys, uh, which I think describes what we're trying to do here a wee bit. So a very good morning to you, a very, very warm welcome to you. Hello, Patricia. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope everyone does. As I say, please give me the thumbs up here, wherever you're watching it, and also on YouTube, because the more you do that, the more, well, I know that you're enjoying the content. And it lets Facebook and YouTube know that, which is important. And it, it just allows it to get out there just that wee bit more. And it's given me a wee bit of feedback because, you know, it's Saturday evening and I've put aside quite a few hours to do this for you this morning. So I'm recording it the night before, it's Saturday evening, just so that you've got that at 11 o'clock as you're going to be viewing it uh, this morning. So please, if you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. Uh, a little appreciation and gratitude goes a long way with me and it's very encouraging for me. And I'll always try and put up as much as I can to help you, to support you and my spiritual community and my tribe on your journey. Um, also, I would say, why not subscribe to the channel? Uh, why not hit subscribe? There's only 88 subscriptions. Can you believe that? I'm, I'm gobsmacked at how low that is. And that's why I asked my younger friend uh, to update my name there a little bit so that people could find me that little bit more easily. If you enjoy my style and you enjoy my meditations. Okay, it will be within the hour. I said it would take about half an hour last time, but it was actually 50 minutes. You know me when I get going. You know me when I get going. Okay, I've got a really lovely meditation I've created. It's my own creation. I like to create some meditations, meditative experiences for you. But I'm going to do a wee bit of talking first. There's a surprise, eh? And I'm going to introduce a topic. So I've mentioned the eclipse. I would like to say that when it's a lunar eclipse, when we're working with the moon energy, we're working with emotion. And we're going right back into the mid-2000s here. 
really. There's a couple of astrological cycles that we're following at the moment. You know, there are bigger cycles within this cycle. This is a smaller cycle, because we're really going back to about 2004 here. So, you know, it's quite an appreciative amount of time, but there are bigger cycles, you know, uh, that really go back um, astrologically, even to when the French Revolution occurred. Isn't it interesting? that the stars are aligning themselves just now, as they did when the French Revolution occurred. And look what's happening in France right now. Mm, interesting. I think there's a lot of positivity coming for humanity, incidentally. And I will say that and share that with you. I think there's a lot of change coming as well. But change starts here with us. And you can't change the world unless you start with yourself at the end of the day. And what we're going to do today, just getting right to that point now, what we're going to do today is some shadow work. We're going to do some shadow work. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the psychologist Carl Jung. Uh, Jung was just fabulous. He, he really came from the school, the psychodynamic school, same school that Freud established. And of course, Freud really, Sigmund Freud got it all going with psychology. But Carl Jung he thought, well, don't know if I quite agree with the psychosexual type development stuff. Get the subconscious mind, or Freud called it the unconscious mind. And Jung presented something, many theories actually, but concentrated on the subconscious mind because he thought it was a little bit deeper than Freud did. And there's a slightly different angle and approach here. So um, the young archetypes, if you like, aspects of the psyche, just to run you through it, you've got the self, which is you, which is the totality of who you are. And we're going to work today on integrating every part of us so that our self is complete. So the self is the true you, the true you, okay? Then we have the shadow. That's what we're working on. That's our dark side. That's the side of us that we repress. That's the side that we don't want to acknowledge for lots of reasons that I'll go into in just a few moments. We have anima, which is the feminine aspect of ourself, and animas, which is the more masculine part of ourself. And of course, if you think about it, um, most of us are quite androgynous beings. And that means that we're balanced with our feminine and our masculine qualities. And Susan Benn, a psychologist in 1974, talked about androgyny and androgynous individuals integrate the masculine and feminine and are undoubtedly happier people. So it's really, really nice to be in touch with both the masculine and feminine. And a wee bit of biology or psychology biology behind that is that the right brain is the feminine brain, which actually regulates the left body because of the symmetry of the brain. And the left brain is the masculine brain, which is all about reflection and analysis, logical, science, reason, thinking, maybe overthinking with us from time to time. Well, we want a nice balance there. And, you know, if we're talking about synchronizing the brain, I would say we want to be 60% in our right brain, feminine brain, and 40% in the masculine or more analytical, scientific, reasoning brain. So there's a place for everything. And it's nice to be in balance with that. And it's called androgyny when your male and your female aspects are uh, aligned or balanced. I'm digressing a little bit. Let's continue with Carl Jung's archetypes. And the next thing I would say is persona. A term you're familiar with, of course, which comes from the Greek mask, um, like Phantom of the Opera, for example. We're, we're hiding slightly behind our persona. That's what we want to show the world, yeah? So we're going to work a little bit with persona here as well because to have a fully integrated self, then really we should be okay. We should break down persona and we should be okay with the shadow. That allows you to be yourself, you see? Okay, hero, that's the next one. The hero is the part of you that, you know... Um, wants to do good, let's just say. Wants to do good. Yeah, let's just keep it at that. Um, wants to good, do good. We've got the wise old man, which is another archetype of the subconscious mind, and that's your wisdom. That's the part of you that has learned, 
Incidentally, some of it is collective and some of it is personal. So some of this wisdom and aspects of self are from the collective consciousness, you know, all around you. And some of it is from the personal consciousness, which is your own self, your own story, your own life, your own life situation. So the wise old man can be both. You see, it could be a collective wisdom or it could be a personal wisdom. You've learned from your mistakes, you know, not to repeat those again. And then we've got the trickster. Finally, we'll end with the trickster. The trickster is that part of you that wants immediate gratification. Uh, and we all have a trickster. You, you're more aware of it in childhood, of course. Uh, it's when you demand and you want something now. Of course, as adults, what we tend to do, perhaps should consider doing, <laughs> Is, is deferring gratification where we do the more difficult things, uh, the more taxing work, if you like, the more difficult, hard things that we have to do, or things maybe that need to be done that we necessarily won't, don't, we're not so keen on doing, we do them first, and then we gratify ourselves with the nicer tasks. I even do that with the housework. Get the dirty work done first, and then enjoy and reward yourself with the other stuff deferring gratification but we all have a trick star and it wants immediate gratification you can see that aspect in people's mind because they just want what they want and they want it now you know and uh, maybe some people have a larger trick star you know some people have more of a persona some people have a really deep dark shadow now shadow is not all bad i've got a nice meditation for you here where we're going to connect and, and I, I want to suggest to you right away on the onset that we're not just working with dark stuff here, although that could be the case as well. In your shadow, it might be a golden shadow. It, there might be stuff that's repressed from childhood because you were shamed or embarrassed about something that you've actually repressed a part of you that actually sparkles and shines and it could be full of creativity and talent, you know? You might have been told you're a chatterbox when you were young. I'm just using a personal example here. I can relate to that one, you know? I always used to get in my report cards, you know, Jason's very polite and blah, blah, blah. It's a chatterbox. And I always got chatterbox written in my report cards from primary school right the way through until probably when I started doing my, my old grades. Yeah, I'm that old that was old grades back in those days. <laughs> um. Jason's a chatterbox. So what does that do then? That puts an idea in your head that you talk a lot and maybe you've got some negative feedback about that and it inhibits a lot of what you've got to say. So then you might feel shame and embarrassment about speaking, about speaking your truth, about speaking your mind, about confronting someone. You might then be embarrassed or, or maybe fear confrontation because you're triggered in such a way that, you know, I'll say someone at your work's like, let, let, let's do a presentation. I'm thinking, oh, great, I love doing presentations, but let's not talk too long. Let's not go on too long. And that triggers you. And and, and suddenly you, you, you don't talk about all the good stuff that you could be. Um, that inhibits you a little bit. And I just wanted to give you an example. You might think of different examples for yourself. But there's some gold in there. You know, your, your shadow's not all dark. It can be a golden shadow as well. It's just that for whatever reason, we've repressed that stuff. If you want to do shadow work, it will help you with your self-esteem. You know, it'll help you with your self-worth. If you're feeling low self-esteem, low self-worth, that's a good meditation for you. It will help you with your confidence. It'll help you believe in yourself. So again, if you feel you're lacking in confidence, then maybe it's time to visit the shadow here. It'll help with deception. And, and I don't mean that you're lying to other people, although that could be also the case. <laughs> I mean self-deception, really. But also, yeah, with the world. Remember, that persona, that mask. We don't want to necessarily tell people who we really are or be who we really are. You could say that that's deception in some regard. Yeah, not telling lies necessarily, although that could also be included here. If you suffer from anxiety or depression, this might be really useful to you just to release and get in touch with some things and understand why you feel anxious about certain things or why you feel a low mood about particular things. If you're struggling with relationships, this is definitely for you. 
Um, and the whole Jung concept is actually we see our shadow self through the projections. So when you look, and relationships teach us so much about projections. You think of a relationship, friendship, family, or your partner right now. Just think of that person for a moment as being a blank screen. And what you're doing is projecting your movie, your story, you're animating onto them. And, and you can see through them who you are and understand yourself. So there's real function in that. And that's wonderful. And it is one way to look at relationships. I know there are so many more functions of relationships than that, but that's relevant here right now. And whenever we're triggered, you know, when somebody says something and we start to feel a wee bit uncomfortable and a little bit edgy or a little bit defensive or we want to disappear uh, or we want to run 100 miles away, or whatever it may be, and it makes you feel really quite anxious or aroused in a, a negative sort of way, angry even, you know, when you're triggered, but it's very unsettling to be triggered. Whatever that is, okay, that's your shadow. Somebody's just pressed a button in you. It's not them. It's not their fault. They don't know everything that you've been through. They don't understand your shadow self, and you probably don't understand your shadow self completely either. You just think, oh, I don't like that. Don't like that topic. Don't like that person. Don't like that situation. It triggers me. But actually, it's a mechanism where we can learn to understand ourselves. So relationships, if you're struggling in your relationships just now, especially intimate relationships, especially if it's with your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, or whoever it may be, then shadow work is a brilliant thing to do. This will improve your relationships, not only with other people, but also the world. Okay, if you feel you're getting a bit self-absorbed um, or you feel excessive shame, guilt, um it will this work will really help you it also helps you be more creative express yourself better forgive yourself accept yourself have self-compassion and also compassion towards others it gives you clarity and i think it helps you make decisions a little bit more easily as well it contributes to your overall wellness and it helps you understand your childhood and those critical seven first years of your life uh, that we were shaped. Of course, we were in the theta brainwave more in the first seven years of life. We were in the right brain, interestingly enough, in those first seven years of life. They really shaped us when you're in a theta state, and we're going to go into one to do this meditation, of course. When you're in a theta state, you absorb everything like a sponge. And that's why we learn so rapidly and so quickly when we're young. You know, it does make sense. But maturation, which is the unfolding of ability with age, as we begin to mature and we reach seven, then we start to go into the left brain a wee bit more. And that's why we can do more abstract things like eventually algebra or, you know, like 1C minus 3C before seven years. But once we get into the left brain, we begin to understand abstract, scientific reason, hypothesis building and all that stuff. So it is good and it is useful. But my point was that when we're in the right brain, and it is the right brain, we absolutely absorb information like a sponge. And, and we take in information and there's little discernment as well. When you're seven or under seven, there's little discernment. So there's not that part of your mind and your subconscious mind doesn't go fact, fiction, or correct, incorrect. I don't want to say right, wrong, but you know what I'm, where I'm getting. I don't want to sound like judgmental. Of course, when we're younger, we're less judgmental. But let's just say we've got less discernment and we've got less discernment around the truth. So therefore, we take on the information as a fact and we hold that information in our subconscious mind and it's stored there for good. We can change the subconscious mind and it's quite dynamic. So what's going on in your own life right now will become subconscious. Just look at your dreams. And that's a really interesting concept too as well. You know, that Freud or Jung spoke about dreams and during eclipse season, your dreams become vivid. And, and, and also Mercury's in retrograde. So you might be dreaming about 
things that happened a long time ago. And it might be a little bit frustrating, but you're actually, if you like, processing. And processing on a different level. And making a bit more sense of that. So, I mean, I've had some really vivid dreams lately. I know many of you have, because you said on my Facebook page, and thanks for everyone that comments when I do a wee energy update or a wee astrological update, because uh, I think it's useful to, to let people know about these things. We've also had a lot of solar activity and solar flares. That's going to increase your dream activity as well and reduce your ability to sleep. So you might be waking up really early just now. If it's a nice day, you just go out and make the most of it. You know, you get some extra hours. Uh, it's a little bit less frustrating. But if you wake up and you've had some reoccurring dreams or dreams, have a little think about it. Jot some stuff down in the journal. Have a journal for your shadow as well. I do encourage you to do that. Have a wee think about the patterns, who, what, not even so much the who's, um, or even the what's or the why's or the when's or anything, the themes. Okay, that is what what themes are your dreams showing you just now? Because it's showing you where you're out of alignment, perhaps. I don't mean to be cheeky or disrespectful, but it's maybe showing you the stuff that you maybe want to work on. How about that? It's a nicer way of putting it, isn't it? We like to put things nicely, especially in a Sunday morning. And, and always, actually. So um, some ways that you can just, you know, if you're just watching this video and you don't want to do shadow work, just to say to you that you can journal things. Uh, you can create affirmations for your shadow self once you're in touch with it. You know, and you can affirm that you trust yourself, you love yourself, or whatever that you need to do. Um, that the shadow self's kind of blocking within you. A lot of blocks are basically your shadow. Um, because your subconscious mind is this servant that wants to keep you safe and protected, and it's just overdoing it a wee bit. So once we connect with that, we, we can do some work in the subconscious mind, even affirmations or EFT, theta healing, the best if you ask me. Hypnosis, anything like that, uh, would be working with your subconscious mind. But you could also just have a wee chat with yourself quite regularly, you know, and with your shadow, make friends with your shadow. Let the shadow become a light space. You know, your shadow can shrink and become lighter and brighter and it may have some gold uh, the more we get comfortable working with this. Um, one other wee point is um, you can work with your shadow through doing some creative stuff. You know, so if you're into arts and crafts, then, you know, explore it. And, you know, you might want to paint what your shadow appears like, like when we do a wee bit work here, you might want to create some kind of image of what that's like, revisit it and paint it again. Expressing your shadow is really quite important. Remember, the subconscious mind is trying to block you from expressing the shadow because for some reason, you think it is the worst thing to do. And that's the bit of you that might have self-loathing, self-hate, and no wonder then we feel depression or anxiety or, or, or deep fears, defensiveness, triggered constantly, so therefore withdrawing a lot of, a lot of the time so that we're not triggered by other people. See, if I'm, if I'm relating to you, then stick with this video. Um, I hope that you enjoy. But what I'm going to do, is I'm going to do it myself, is I'm going to invite you to have a little pause. Um, I've described the shadow and what we're going to do. And um, I invite you to make yourself a cuppa. I'm going to make myself some lemon ginger tea with a wee bit of honey to sweeten me up. I invite you to have a wee pause and a wee cuppa or a wee stretch. Maybe get a blanket, light some candles, let the brightness come in. You know, we're going to illuminate gently our shadow. I'm going to be really gentle. And while we're having this break, you might just want to consider something that may be lurking in your shadow, okay? I'll help you find that a little bit and work with that. But, you know, you might want to have a reconsider what's triggering me, what's constantly triggering me. That's the best thing to, to actually identify your shadow. What keeps coming up in relationships? What's making you feel uncomfortable? 
what's stressing you out, getting you down, making you feel anxious? Have a wee thought, a wee reflection, a wee gentle one. And we're going to choose one thing to work with. What part of you do you not like? In fact, let me just let me just screen share for a wee moment. I'm really hoping this works. <laughs> oh, I have to laugh. Jason and technology. Um, okay. Ah. Okay. Oh no, it's not going to work. I had it up. I had I sent myself an email previously. Um ah, never mind. No ah, I tell you what, I can look at this. Okay. How do you believe people see you? How would they describe you to someone else? How does that make you feel? What are your worst traits? Uh, or what are the worst traits someone else can have? You know, like that idea of projection according to you. Um, when did you demonstrate those traits? What tends to make you judgmental towards others? Okay, maybe indicating what's in your shadow. What memories are you ashamed of? Who do and what do you envy? You might want to write a letter to a person that's hurt you the most in your life and tell them everything you like to say and then burn it if you ask me. But it's burn it, get rid of it. Because you've, you've done that, you might want to share it, but I don't think you'll need to because forgiveness is personal. They don't need to know. They don't need to know that you've let something go. It's good on you if you have. What frightens you the most? What ways could you safely expose yourself to a particular fear or phobia? What emotions typically bring out the worst in you? And why do you think this happens? Now you might want to just play this recording back. It's a lot of information here and that's why I'm giving you a break in a moment. When was the last time you self-sabotaged? Self-sabotaging is also like a real uh, sign of the shadow, you know? Uh, how were you feeling at that time? And what triggered that behaviour? Which friendships make you feel safe and secure? And what relationships no longer serve you? And please don't feel bad about that because sometimes we do outgrow people in relationships. Some people are here for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Just being honest, um, some self-honesty and self-awareness there. What's something you wish that other people understood about you? Because that'll be in your shadow for certain. What are some lies you previously told yourself? Now, I'm meaning probably about yourself, but might be about a situation, you know? Because maybe it was too painful to see the reality at that time about that situation. But again, deception, as I said at the beginning, is a good way of seeing what's in the shadow self. What's your worst memory from childhood? What's the worst character trait? that you have as a result of this memory or events from childhood. Oh, uh, when we do shadow work, we're definitely working with the childhood. And yeah, as I say, if you need assistance, help or anything, just be in touch with me. You get at Synergy Reiki Studio. It's my job, but I am your guide, uh, should you wish to choose me. What were your parents' best qualities and characters? What were their traits? What were their worst traits? How do you feel when drama occurs? What makes you feel self-conscious? That's another one where you be a shadow. Okay. So, I mean, after our break, we're going to choose something here. So that's why we're having a break, just to reflect on these things. What makes you feel unsafe? What makes you feel insecure? What do you currently have a grudge against? <laughs> so that really is suggesting that you resent something. If you're holding a grudge, you're not letting it go for a reason because it hurt you. So maybe have a wee look at how does that grudge resentment serve you just now? You know, 
What's the purpose of it? It's like, we'll be we doing Theta Healing. I absolutely love it. Really. If anyone would like some Theta Healing here, Shadow Whip. Ah, oh, perfect for it. Just perfect. Okay. Who's let you down most in your life? What makes you feel most valued? Let's see. There's some positivity in your shadow. And describe a trait that you see in other people that you wish you had yourself. And maybe think about why you would like that particular trait. So those are ways that we can actually tune in to the shadow self. So I'm going to let you have a wee break. You can see it's getting dark here. So I must have been speaking for a wee while. And then we're going to just do a little meditation. And and what we're going to do is just get, get you to think about something that's maybe made you feel a little bit anxious or stressed or worried, that you resent, something that maybe angers you or saddens you about yourself, something that makes you feel unsafe or, or something like that. Okay, so we're just going to deal with one little thing, all right? And I'm going to help you heal that and get in touch with that after your break. Enjoy your break. Don't go away. Uh, you might not need a break, but um, grab yourself a journal, a pencil, maybe get yourself a wee blanket, light a candle, have a glass of water, maybe make yourself a cuppa. Sunday morning. I hope you're enjoying so far. Nice little meditation to come. I'll see you in a moment. Hello and welcome back. I didn't actually move to be quite perfectly honest with you. Um, but I hope you had a nice wee break there, a wee breather. What we're going to do is just go into a theta state and we're going to do a little meditation that I've created called Shadow Rucksack. So, you know, subconscious mind, it's repressed. It's like we're going to take something out of a rucksack and we're going to do some special healing with you. So, excuse me, some theta healing, some healing. We're going to work with the angels and all sorts. Uh, it's going to be amazing and incredible, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's start soft, start gently, okay? So I know I've ran through a lot of points with you this morning, but please, if you can just choose something that isn't so upsetting, you know, just a little something that's been showing itself to you, that you've been triggered, that you keep seeing in relationships, something, okay? Just, just, just now, just get the weekend, have to think about it, and then we're just going to forget all about that for the moment. And I invite you to get yourself really comfortable and just take a wee moment to feel yourself being truly supported right now. You may have your feet on the ground. You may be sitting on the chair. Just notice the contact between yourself and whatever may be supporting you at this time. And I invite you to close your eyes, to relax your tummy, and to take some slow, deep breaths into your tummy. Breathe in really deeply, full body breaths in through the nostrils, if at all possible. Breathe in deep into your tummy. And as you exhale, just allow your whole body to relax and to let go. In your own time, taking another slow, deep breath. Relaxing that little bit further with the out breath and noticing the contact between your body and whatever may be supporting you at this time. Take another slow deep breath into your centre, into your tummy, allowing your whole body to relax that little bit further with the out breath. That's beautiful, thank you. And we're going to gather some unconditional love because I feel this is a really useful thing to do. And, and think about anything that brings us unconditional joy just now. It could be a person, place, a pet, a hobby, anything that brings you unconditional joy. And just for this moment, feel that love. Really focus on what brings you unconditional joy. And feel that love, feel that joy, that appreciation, that gratitude emanate from your beautiful heart into your entire body. And just notice your whole vibration lift and change as we do this. And bring your awareness now down onto your feet. 
I'd like you to imagine that your feet are growing nice, big, strong tap roots into the earth. Like a big strong dandelion root just now growing from each foot. And as you exhale, just imagine that you're sending your big strong tap roots down through the foundations into the earth, into Mother Earth, into the soil below. And with each out breath, imagine your roots growing downward and outward into the soil. Imagine your roots being strong and permeating the harder soils and rocks of the earth. Imagine your roots growing through the minerals, the elements, the crystals, and all the layers of the earth. Imagine your roots growing into the very heart of Mother Earth. And I invite you to take a few slow, deep breaths. And imagine that you're breathing in through your roots in this glorious Sunday morning and bringing up the energy from the earth as you do so. And feel that energetically flowing into your feet. It may feel cool, tingly, warm, cold. It may feel viscous or fluid-like, like your feet are in a little puddle. And just notice the difference. Keep breathing in through your roots and imagine that you're pulling that energy up into your legs. You may feel it already all the way up to your crown, but just imagine that you're pulling that energy up into your thighs, into your thigh bone, into your hips and into the base of your spine. And as you continue to breathe in through your roots, imagine that you're pulling that energy from the base of your spine all the way up to your crown. Flowing up through the vertebrae, through all the chakras. Beautiful, all the way up to your crown. And I invite you to take another deep breath and pull the energy from the centre of the earth all the way up through your body and up to your crown in one go. And I invite you to do that one more time, taking a slow deep breath, pulling the earth energy all the way up through your body, rising up through your spine and through the, the vertebrae and the chakra. Imagine that flowing out your crown like a bubble of energy to surround you in a beautiful, colourful bubble. And just notice the colour of your bubble this morning. There may be many colours. There may be a dominant colour. It may be iridescent, just like blowing a bubble. And take a moment also to notice the texture of your bubble, the energy just now all around you. Beautiful, incredible and amazing. Just feel that in your space just now. I know that we're just going to expand our consciousness up and connect with divinity. Connect with our highest mind, our soul and every part of us. Without any judgment. Taking a deep breath and as you exhale, just imagine that you're pushing up, rising in your bubble, up to the ceiling, up through the roof, up above your home, above your town, into the quiet sky. Imagine that you're going up through the sky, above your country, above any clouds, should there be any. And imagine now that you're travelling through the universe in your bubble of light, with the stars whizzing by you as you push yourself up through the universe. You may see stars, colours, patterns, shapes, sacred geometry, symbols, as we push ourselves up through the universe, through the darker skies with less stars, up through more bright starry skies. And imagine that you're going just beyond the universe now and your beautiful bubble of light through a golden hue, a golden mist. As you push up through that, imagine that now you're going up through some jelly-like substance, any colour, any texture, maybe like a rainbow. We're going up through the laws that govern the universe just now. And imagine that above your head there's a skylight Terribly iridescent white light. With your next out breath, imagine that you're pushing yourself up through that skylight into the perily iridescent white light, into this space of unconditional love and peace, of divinity, connecting with the great infinite spirit, connecting with source. Beautiful. Imagine that you're traveling to the center of this energy just now, like traveling to the center of the sun. 
and just take a little moment to breathe in that energy, feel your whole body expand, know that you are one with all that is, and all that is is one with you, you're one with the entire universe, and the universe is one with your beautiful self. Just taking a few deep breaths. I'm intending the unconditional love from this space, from this source, the unconditional love from the creator of all that is, flows into every cell, molecule and atom of your being at this moment now. Thank you. That's beautiful. And I'd like you just to imagine that you've got a rucksack on just now. And but you're able to go into this rucksack that contains elements of your shadow, the stuff that you have repressed, that you've hidden, the stuff that maybe made you feel shame or guilt or someone's triggered you. Imagine just now that you're taking something out of your rucksack and you're placing it in front of you just now. Are you feeling okay about that? Just take a breather and know that it's okay, that we all have a shadow, we all have aspects that we don't want others to see, we all have bits of us that we want to keep in the dark, but just imagine that you're bringing it into the light, gently, softly, with love, with compassion. And just for a moment, let go of that, whatever it may be, the mental identification of the shadow and just for a little moment scan your body just to see where you hold that energy or those emotions and it may be that you are locating where you hold that feeling just now and it may be that you're labeling that as well you may say well that shadow feels a bit like sadness or it feels a little bit like anger or whatever it may do start at your crown work your way down your body where are you feeling that in your body just now and I invite you just to gently, without any judgment and without any thought, feel it. Just let yourself come into touch with it and breathe into the feeling. Wherever you may be experiencing that in your body just now, just breathe into it. And notice that it begins to soften a wee bit more with each breath. Just be patient and gentle with yourself just now. If your mind wants to get involved, can later on just go back into the feeling, breathe into the feeling until it softens, wherever you may be holding that energy in your body just now. That's beautiful. Let's keep breathing into that until it feels nice and soft. And imagine because we want to clear any feelings that are uncomfortable here at this point, at this juncture of our meditation, I want you to imagine that you're actually physically pulling that energy out. A little bit like weeding the garden and, and, and pulling a dandelion out by the tap root. Imagine that you're pulling the energy out by the root wherever you feel you're holding it. And you may literally use your hands to pull it out and bring all this energy. Pull it out from your body, wherever you're holding it, and place it in front of you just now. Imagine that you're pulling out of every cell in your body. That's energy, that's darkness, that's troubling energy, that's repressed stuff that's been there possibly for a while. Just pull it all out. Pull it all out. Every strand of your being. Just breathe into anything that feels uncomfortable until it feels softer. And if you have to, pause the video until it feels more comfortable. Okay. I'd like you to imagine that this situation, these feelings, the circumstances are resolved every single level, 
Just imagine that for a moment. Whatever you're working on, that it's completely resolved in every level. And we're going to call upon Archangel Michael just now and invite Archangel Michael into your space just now. And we're going to ask Archangel Michael to kindly use his blue flaming sword to cut away those cords, those ties, that energy that you are releasing from your shadow, the stuff that no longer serves you. Imagine Archangel Michael as he is at this moment now, cutting away, cutting it free from you, relinquishing this energy that you are pulling from your body, that you are processing in this moment now. And we're going to invite in Saint Geraint, the keeper of the purple violet flame, and ask Saint Geraint to transform, to transmute the energy that Michael is pulling free from you just now. All those cords and ties and the roots that you've been pulling out, we're asking Saint Geraint to come in with the purple violet flame and transform, transmute this energy into harmless form. And you may imagine that right now just evaporate. I invite you to take some breaths. And just feel it in your body. Feel that energy relinquish, let go. Transmute. It's a little bit like alchemy. Transforming it into gold. Just take a moment. To let that happen. And trust this process. And I'm going to ask the creator of all that is to come in and do an instant healing and whatever you may be working on just now and to transmute that energy, to change it into unconditional love and send it to the light to be replaced with unconditional love on every level throughout every cell of your body and in your shadow, subconscious mind. Let me part of you right now. Let me take a deep breath. I'd like you to think of all the lessons that you've learned. And everything that that's taught you, whatever you're healing, clearing right now, and just thank it. And your shadow self, just thank it for all the lessons that it's taught you. And as you do that, I'm going to ask the creator just to complete any lessons that you've been learning around whatever it is you're releasing right now. I'm going to ask the creator just to resolve that and complete it on the past life or historical ancestral level as well. And finally, I'm going to ask for an instant healing for you right now in this moment. Sit back, relax, you've done all your work. Hope you feel that beautiful energy flow into you. I'd like you to imagine just now that you are walking forward in this light and walking through a rainbow of energy, like a waterfall, an energetic waterfall of all the colours of the rainbow clearing you, cleansing you, balancing your chakras, revitalising you, refreshing you. Bring the light in. And imagine that you're in that beautiful bubble of light. Imagine that you're dropping back down through the jelly substance and into the universe. You're travelling down back through the starry skies. You may imagine them whizzing by you just now. 
the darker skies and the bright starry skies, imagine that you can see a beautiful blue planet on the horizon with her magnificent sceneries and landscapes. Snow-capped mountains, forests, beautiful oceans and seas. Imagine that you're coming down through any clouds way up high and back into the crisp sky. Imagine yourself just above your town, above your home, back into this space and keep your eyes closed for a little moment, really feeling the contact between your body and whatever may be supporting you at this time. And I invite you to take a really deep breath into your tummy, in through your nostrils. And as you exhale, imagine that you're sending all your energy down into the earth again. Imagine that energy is just flowing down as if it's going down through your roots once more, through all the layers of the earth, into the centre of Mother Earth, Gaia. And then take a nice deep breath and breathe that refreshed, cleansed energy back up into your body, feeling it flow up into your feet, travelling into your legs, into your hips, up into your spine. Imagine it transfer into every cell, molecule and atom of your being. And just whenever you feel ready, just whenever it's right for you, begin to move your body, bringing some gentle movement into your body, wiggling your toes, your fingers, and maybe have a nice big stretch. Really stretch those arms up. And give those arms a little shake, wrists a little shake, hips a little shake. And we're going to do something called the butterfly hug that I think I introduced last time. Now you just hold your arms, run your hands from your hands, all about your forearms, up to the top of your arms, up to your shoulders, and then back down again. Just repeating that a few times, as many times as you like. Giving yourself a nice hug this morning or whenever you may be viewing this recording. The butterfly hug, how beautiful is that? Give yourself a nice hug. And may I thank you so much for viewing this video. Uh, again, feel free to comment, to like it, to share it, to, to, to replay it, it's here indefinitely. Thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you enjoyed that chat and working with the shadow self. Ultimately, we're working at accepting and integrating every part of ourselves. So that we, we don't need a mask. We can be ourselves, wherever we may go, without being triggered. And when that is so, you've worked on your shadow. Thank you so much for joining me, beautiful people. My love to Patricia, Iris Cairns, my love to you and to everyone. Thank you so much. May peace and sunshine and everything nice be with you on this day. Thanks for viewing. Bye for now. Bye. Don't forget to drink some water. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Lots of love to everyone.